My last high school game, Colin, was against Jamie German, which yeah. at that time was the number one recruit in the nation, Fort Myers, Florida. The University of Miami came to see him play me in Lakeland against our, my, we had a finals game, the second round of the playoffs against them. They beat us really, they beat us. Yeah, they punched us up really bad. But I had, a, I had an incredible game, and I remember falling on my knees, and I cried because I, I didn't know what my future was. You didn't know if you were going to play college football. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know nothing. And when I got back from Florida State, four days before signing day. Oh, so, like, it's like late January. We had, I had no, no offer nowhere on the table. Okay, and, and you grew up from a humble background, so yeah. you, you couldn't have paid your way in or anything? or No, we didn't have no money to get in. My oh. mom was gone. My mom was living in Tennessee. I had to live other. This my mom, was it. This was your this life. Was, this was my life. And Who called? Dennis Erickson called. The University of Miami, four day, I mean, Kathleen High School, four days before signing day, and he said, and the coach called me to the office, and I walked in, and I got to hold my, so I don't get emotional, because this moment really changed my Please life. Please do. This is great. And I walked in to the office, and he was crying, and he looked at me, and he said, Miami just gave you a scholarship. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, like, the University of Miami just gave you a full ride scholarship. And I was like, Coach, are you serious? And he was like, they saw you play your last high school game. And this is, and the way you played got you into college. Change your Four life. days, man, I got, in, I got in the car. I had, <clears throat> I had one pair of jeans. I had three white T-shirts. I had one pack of number two pencils. And I had two folders. And that's what my grandmother dropped me off with, with $20 worth of food stamps. She said, this is all I can do. Wow. I said, I'll make it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Isn't yeah. that amazing? Man, and then that, and that's why my roommates, you know, Earl Little, Trent, Trent Jones, Rohan Marley, um, them boys, and my roommate who was, you know, killed and stuff in college, but they they took me in like like you would never see nobody be taken in. Like, you know, I didn't have clothes. You know, so I had to share clothes, you know, and ask them to wear their clothes. You're gonna make sometimes. me cry. No, You're not no, gonna no, cry. no. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> no, man, it's just, it's just, you know. That's I'll, why you've always been. Um, I, I've, I've told you. Uh, I, I can't even tell the story, or I'll start crying on the air. I asked uh, Dilfer over a glass of wine about you, and he started crying. Yeah. And Bill Romanowski is one of the toughest guys in the world, and I asked him about you, and he he couldn't continue the story. So everybody I've asked about you, they can't, like Romanowski's tough. And mm -hmm. Romanowski just like stopped talking. Dilfer started crying. Mm -hmm. Because when you live a life of, I mean, you were sharing clothes. Mm -hmm. By the way, and I, and I say this as your friend, was it embarrassing? Were you, how did that land for you? Yeah, because I, I was always the, so I was always the kid that was like, um, I was always picked at. Cause I never had anything. Like uh, we were, my mom, mom gave me away for a few years because she just could not afford me. She was like, I cannot feed you. I don't have things to do for you. So, and I was like, mom, well, you got to stay in Tennessee. This is what y'all want to do. But you, you, you introduced me to God. So he's showing me something else and I'm gonna make it. And she was like, did you did you think about so you go into the NFL you're you become by year five or six you're a really like becoming one of the icons of the league mm -hmm. like how much did that by year eight nine ten is that still part of your DNA it'll never it'll never leave that's why I don't poor never leaves man never man you even even now I'll talk to you about financial stuff and you're like not a big spender uh -huh. and you put money away uh -huh. and yeah. Poor never <laughs> Man, leaves. it never leaves. I try to tell my kids this. I said, you guys will always be at a disadvantage to, 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 to know what hard work really is. And really, it's because you don't know what it feels like to have absolutely nothing. To where the only thing you have are your morals. That's it. And that's the only thing going to get you in most doors. I'm telling you, the people I met from high school to college, the honest guy having truth, the people that I found later in life remember two things about me. I always smiled and I always gave a firm handshake. I, no lie. 
every coach, every person who's ever met me yeah. say the same thing. And <clears throat> my uncle, I never forget, he used to always tell me, he's, he, he told me this one line. He says, I don't care if you have a penny in your pocket. Make sure you look good and make sure you smell good. And somebody will notice you. Give you a chance. Yeah, they, I guarantee you somebody will give you a chance. And that's been my motto, man, for a long, long, long time. One of the more popular players that's ever played this game, Ray Lewis. So you'll be in the Hall of Fame. In fact, the very first time I brought you on the show, <laughs> remember what I said? I said, Hall of Famer Ray Lewis. And I'm thinking, wait, he's not eligible yet. I just I've pretty much already got you in the Hall. Do you think you'll cry when you stand up there? Um, it would be hard not to. Um, because everything that I've always did, I promised my mom that I would do it, but she couldn't understand it. My mom, my mom has always been my best friend. Like she's my, she's my best, best friend. There's nothing we don't talk about. There's nothing we don't go through together. I grew up with her. My mom had me at 15 and she was on her own. So the moment I can't sit here and talk about her alone without expressing how I really, how, how emotional I really get. Was but she a tough mom? Line, yeah, and that's why I loved her so much, because she did not let me choose which way I was going to go. My mom's hands heavy, heavy, and she used to hit you in the mouth, and she used to, yeah, she was, she was really physical towards me, but that's the only choice she had, right? I didn't, I didn't have a father, so Pops wasn't around. He is now, but he wasn't around then, and so I think the day I get up there, man, I, the th when I started writing my speech, um, <clears throat> I won't tell nobody what it is, but I started writing a certain part of it and I had to stop and I, and I grabbed a cigar and I walked outside and I grabbed me a nice drink and I said, I just got to sit down. Yeah. Cause this is like, wow. Like, wow. Like, cause it, it's hard to tell your story. And that's why when I wrote my book, it's hard to tell it unless somebody directly lived it. Sure. And I lived it. And so, yeah, man, I, it's, it, it will be, I, I will say this, though, and I want to say this for, to get it off of me right quick. To every guy that's going to the Hall of Fame, definitely um, um, LT, the, the times we had with each other. Lawrence man. Taylor? Uh, no, Ladanian. Oh, Ladanian. Who's oh, going in tomorrow. You know him well? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Like, we grew up with each other. Jason Taylor, like... You grew up with Laura, LaDainian Tomlinson? Yeah, like, when I say grew up, like, we was in the league. Oh, no, no, you... Balanced I remember doing a, I remember doing a topic <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, at ESPN eight years ago, yeah. and I said... And I ranked the NFL players, and I had LaDainian one and you two. And I said, best players in the... Because Brady wasn't... It, this was mm -hmm. not... Brady wasn't Brady yet. And LaDainian Tomlinson, people forget, was virtually a perfect back. My goodness. He could block... Everything. He could catch. My, my great goodness. locker room. Never fumbled. Never, never hurt. People never. forget how for about seven years. We we used to play each other, man. And every time we used to play us, and I and he you know it was me on the bottom of the pile, he always said, Ray, I know that's you. You're the only one that can make that play. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, LT, I'm not letting you get loose. I'm not letting you get loose. He was, but congratulations to those guys. Yeah, man. LT really awesome. was the he was about the best player in the league for about a six year stretch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he literally. Easily. No flaws. Easily. Easily. By the way, speaking of Miami, I told Michael Irvin, the Hurricanes look like they're back. We got the number one recruiting class right now. That's Mark nice. Rick. Mark Rick, I, I went down there and spoke to the team I'm at, at his big camp a year ago. Mark Rick, yeah. And, and, and I'm telling you, the energy that he brings, the connection that he brings to the kids, that's what we've always had in Miami. Yeah. And that's what I think over a block of years, we started getting away from that. But he's like, he's inviting all of the guys back now. And now, that's what Pete Carroll did. Yeah. When Pete came back to USC, Pete's thing is, I got to use these guys. Mm -hmm. Paul Hackett, not mm -hmm. so much, a little reluctant. Uh, first of all, Mark Richt is one of the really genuine people. Yes, he really is. He's a really. Colin, he really, really is. He really, really, really is. We are, uh, what, me, me, uh, me, Sap, Michael. Ed Reed, uh, missing one, but all of us will be honored um, in the Ring of Honor at the same time at University of Miami. When? I want to say October 12th. This year? Yes, this year, October 12th. I want to say that's the exact date. I'm not totally yeah. sure. The AD called me a few days ago to do that. But Who was the second best player on your team the last year you were at Miami? 
The second, but you were the best player. Who was the second best player on your team? Your last year at Miami. The last year at Miami yeah, in '95. Yeah. Man, I couldn't say who was the second best. You know how many texts I get from that. I just, just <laughs> nobody's listening right now. Yes, they are. Nobody listens to this show. Yes, they do. Not very interesting. There's a lot at all. of people listen to was this show. Was Edger and James on that team? No, no. This boy's younger than me. They were babies when I was doing that. Um, was there an offensive lineman that was good? Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of guys that were good that year. We had a bunch of guys come out that year. Oh, my God. With Dan Ferguson, Kennard Lane, Utila Green. We had Trent Jones. We had, oh, my gosh. Look at, those, look, at, look at those pictures of you Man, and Man, stop it. Look how small my arms are. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, look, you, look, you do look more wiry there. Yeah, I was. I how was. much did you weigh there? About 205. What do you weigh now? About 255. What'd you play at? 260. God. Yeah. I would hate to get hit by you. Yeah. I like I like life. No, this. seriously. I like that that's your first thought. <laughs> no, I mean, if, if I was a quarterback in high school, yeah. I'd cry. Yeah. I would No, I would just stop. I would just take my helmet off, and I'd look at you, and I'm like, I'm going to cry. That yeah, might the, be why you didn't make it. You told me. You, <laughs> you to, I know. I'm not tough enough. You told me one K time. K-Breezy. K-Breezy. K-Breezy? K-Breezy. <laughs> 